Uh, do you think police are intentionally not doing a thorough job on this case? You know, the civil rights leadership is unified on this case because the facts just strike out and they shock you, this innocent uh, boy who was minding his own business effectively in this neighborhood. But you know what strikes me, Soledad, is that the police very quickly, very quickly sought to classify this as self-defense. And to me, that violates every established protocol of a clear investigation. So not only uh, are we saying investigate and bring, uh, bring justice for Trayvon Martin, ensure that there's justice for Trayvon Martin, and bring George Zimmerman, uh, charges against George Zimmerman, I also say that the actions of the police department need to be, need to be carefully examined by the Justice Department. The police department have said uh, a lot of the reasons that they have not arrested George Zimmerman is that uh, because of the stand your ground law. Let me tell you, what the police did is they very quickly sought to classify this. They didn't do what police are expected <clears throat> to do in cases like this, which is to say we reserve judgment until such time as there can be a complete and thorough investigation by our department, by the grand jury, uh, and, and let the process go forward. But for, uh, I think, the actions of uh, civil rights organizations and the media shedding light on this case, uh, this may have been a case that could have been easily swept under the rug. It's going to be hard to prove racial bias, which is if you're going to uh, prosecute this under the federal hate crimes law, you're going to have to prove that. That's this, but I, why would, I don't think it would be hard to prove that at all. In fact, I think the language that Mr. Zimmerman uses at 152 in the recording pretty much falls under the guidance of our hate crimes laws. This is the one. This is the, the two words he uses. Right. So but there is. Was, it, let's play a little bit of this recording. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're not going to be able to play uh, the part of the recording mm -hmm. where he sort of breaks into a whisper. And that's really what people have been talking about. So I want to play a little bit of his earlier call to 911. Mm -hmm. Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. This guy looks like he's up to no good, or he's on drugs or something. It's raining, and he's just walking around looking about. So then, further on in this 911 call, uh, at 2 minutes and 21 seconds, he curses and says a racial slur. And it's uh, whispered. It's hard to hear, uh, but... I could hear it pretty clearly this, when know, I listen to it on the recording. I think people, the hate crime aspect of it is important, but you have a basic fundamental murder which uh, may have taken place. And I'm saying may because I don't want to preempt the authorities. And a, a hate crime uh, can occur with an underlying crime, uh, and that's usually how it takes place. But look, this is a young man, 17 years old, who was where he was had a right to be on a public street, uh, and I am so, so uh, shocked at what's coming out about this uh, alleged neighborhood captain. You know, we had a neighborhood captain program that was very, neighborhood watch program was highly successful uh, when I was mayor of New Orleans, and everything he did beyond making a call violated established protocol mm -hmm. for a neighborhood watch program.